Uh, let me tell you guys a story. You know this poem. This is an an incredibly profound verse from Imra al Qais. Let me tell you about Imra al Qais. Yeah. Imra al Qais is from the celebrity Don Arabs from pre-Islamic times. So he's you know, several generations pre-Islam. You're talking probably about a hundred years prior to Islam and then coming in, coming towards it. But he's he passes away maybe about two generations pr prior to Islam. So Imra al Qais, this legend, he's deemed one of the most uh, eloquent of the ancient Arabs. And his name is Imra al Qais ibn, um, ibn Hujr al Kindi. And he's from the tribe of Kinda, which were in the, the, the around the Najd region of Arabia, and, and some spread out a bit. And they were known from the uh, descendants of the southern Arabs. So from the kind of Himyarite kingdoms. And, and Kinda were a kingdom in and of themselves. And Imra al Qais's forefathers, they were kings of this region, and they were very and they and Kinda were an important tribe because they their region covered some of the trade routes, so stability in their region ensured safety of passage for 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 you know mercantile travelers so it was really for the merchants so it's incredibly important and what happens is they have several tribes that pay jizya to them and homage and jizya by the way was something you know for a century two before the arabs was well known um it was something that the arabs used to do it was not something islam introduced and we can speak about that another day but and they used to pay jizya. And so some of these tribes, they rebel. There's this uh, insurgency, insurrection. And by and amongst them, Banu Asad. So they rebel against Hujar. And so whilst this is going on, Hujar, he has several sons. And during his time, when he's a king, and he's obviously got control. He's got this under lock, this whole region. Um, Imra al Qais is just a, a kind of, he's just an absolute chill, chill boy. He's just like absolute uh, a drifter. He, he's just a Casanova. He just spends his time writing poetry. He just drinks alcohol. He kind of, he hangs out in the elite circles because he's a prince. He gets access to these elite circles. And he kind of chills out with them. He drinks wine. He's just with women. He's, in fact, his his Mughamarat, his adventures with women are well known. And he's he's like one of the most excessive. <laughs> he really, I mean, any woman he can get a chance to sleep with, he's there. He's on it. You know, this guy is, and he's and he's so eloquent as well. And he's this kind of warrior as well because he comes from this past. But he's often just drunk and he's drifting. And his dad's so fed up with him. His dad can't can't be bothered with him. He calls considers him a waste, and this guy's just a waste of space. So he just travels, um, you know, with a companion or two. He goes to different kind of kings, and they kind of because he's he's charming. They entertain him, and he just spends his nights kind of like this. So what happens? And this is where you have his famous, uh, you know, you have his famous uh, muallaqa. He says, "Qifa nabki min dhikra habibin wa manzili, bisiqt al-lawa bain al-dakhul fahumali." Allah, that's his famous muallaqa where he says, you know, to his two, and this was a um, somebody, and he is like in in some ways he is to Arabic poetry what Mir Taqimir is almost to Urdu poetry. He invents a lot of these these things. In fact, people argue that he promoted this whole wuquf al-atlal, that, you know, you stand on the ruins uh, and the poet says, 
you know, as I pass by the ruins of such and such, and and he calls out to his two companions, that this, some have argued that this may have been, if not introduced and promoted by Imra al-Qais. And the fact that the, the person that he likens women to gazelles and because of their eyes and their slender necks, and this is all him. He's the one who introduces this into Arabic poetry. So he's huge in in uh, in Arabic. And in his poem where he says, you know, stand by this, he says, you know, let us cry over our beloved and so on. It's an amazing poem of his, by the way, full of his, <laughs> his adventures. So he will say uh, in it, he says, Ala ya rubba yomin laka min hunna salihin wala siya ma yomin bidarati jurjur. Allah. He says, and how many days have you had that were awesome with women? Huh? And he says, especially the day of darata jurjur. <laughs> and, and he speaks about he came to this place and there were these young women and they were bathing in this lake and he kind of comes and then he kind of slaughters his camel for them to eat and and they all kind of can't get enough of him and and he really he has this amazing way with words and he says uh and he says the day i climbed into that you know the 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 carriage on top of the camel where the woman would sit. He says, I climbed into Oneza's Khidr. And she said to me, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> you, you know, you're going to, ah, you're going to be the end of me. And he says, uh, lana, what, what is it? What? Hmm. Ah, but but she she kind of complains and she says to him, what are you doing? You know, uh, uh, you know, you, you're going to ruin, you're going to kill my camel, can't take the weight, get off. And and this is, and he has these epic lines in this poem of his, in his Mu'allaqa. And amongst them, which are used proverbially as well, where he says, um, he says, وَلَيْلٍ كَمَوْجِ الْبَحْرِ أَرْخَى سُدُولَهُ عَلَيَّ بِأَنْوَاءِ الْهُمُومِ لِيَمْتَنِ Allah. He says, in the night... It's like a wave, you know, that lowers its curtain over me to just try me with new trials and tribulations. But it's an amazing, but this was this person. So what happens anyway? Um, Imra al-Qais, he's living this life. He's living, he's doing it. <laughs> he's doing it. And his father gets killed. So his father gets killed and he the news reaches him that his father said, I mean, according to some variations, that his father had said that Imra al-Qais will avenge me. And some say, oh, he just took it upon himself. But he 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 has this, he finds out and he's kind of like gutted because he says, because uh, <laughs> he never used to like his father. He says, He says, when I was a child, he just ruined me. Like he let me go to waste. And when I grew old, he just made me carry his blood. As in, I had to avenge his death. And this is why he says, um, when he hears about the death, he thinks, you know what? It's time to get serious. But before he gets serious, he says, اليوم خمر وغدا أمر. Allah. He says, tonight we'll 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 have our wine, but tomorrow, tomorrow we shall dine. <laughs> he says, tomorrow we'll see to the serious issues. And what happens is he kind of rallies around, gets this support from people, says, I'm gonna um, you know, I need to avenge the death of my father from Banu Asad. And So what happens is um, he gets certain people, they kind of support him and, you know, he finally, they agree and they come along with him and he was a warrior. And according to certain uh, narrations, he goes and he fights and he does actually, he, he kills this person of, uh, you know, these people that were responsible for his father's death. But then he says that, you know what, 
we need to restore the kingdom of kinder and i need to be its king <laughs> so some people say well you know yamra al qais you know this you know we 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 were with you up until the point of avenging your father but now you know this is you know this is not really this sounds more like a you problem <laughs> go sort it out yourself and so he goes around thinking you know what i need some i, I need to get more backup so he goes to different um different kind of kings and and it's very interesting actually he goes to uh there's uh those of you that have heard of the um the famous jahili uh jewish arab uh Samo'al, Samo'al ibn Adiyah, who has this fort known as ablaq and he goes to him as well and he kind of seeks some help but then he leaves some of his uh, in fact i think he had his own daughter he leaves her there for security and he leaves some weapons and stuff and um and he's going on this journey trying to get more help trying to rally and somebody tells him you know why don't you go to to caesar Caesar, because you know we we can put you in touch and why don't you go to him so at the time justinian the first is the caesar uh, you know the famous justinian who does all the legal reforms and many of which are still <laughs> european law is still kind of based on some of the justinian kind of reforms but so justin justinian the first is uh, the caesar and somebody puts him in touch and so imra al qais is going off there and he goes and he meets Caesar, and Caesar kind of likes him. He thinks, wah, what a guy. He was charming, eloquent, and you know, he had a way with himself. And um Caesar likes him. So Caesar says, you know what, I'll I'll help you. And he says, Why don't you crash out here a couple of days? So he crashes out. And whilst that's happening, <laughs> you know, as they say, Adat se much poor. He he he, he he bumps into caesar's daughter i think it's caesar's daughter or his sister but i think it's his daughter and you know anke do char ho jati you know this one this one <laughs> you know and imra al qais who's this casanova that cannot let an opportunity go by you know this one <laughs> wrong number right door number next door <laughs> <laughs> so this way he says yaar hmm he says yaar karna to nahi chahiye you know i shouldn't be doing this but dil hai ke manta nahi so what he does is he says yaar chalo <laughs> zara zara touch me touch me so as it happens there's a little spark and there's a, the naughty naughty that happens between Imra al Qais and Caesar's daughter. And oh, I think it may be, I, I recall it to be his daughter. So it may be his sister. So he's he has this. Now, afterwards, people, you know, Caesar kind of has a little inkling that, hmm, is something going on, but he doesn't catch on. And then Imra al Qais kind of bids them farewell. Bye bye. Ta ta. Ciao. And he's off on his way. And Justinian tells him, don't worry, I'm going to send the cavalry. I'm going to send the Roman. <laughs> Rome is going to make its way. So anyway, whilst Imra al-Qais is on his way, and remember, he's this epic poet. Um, somebody from Banu Asad, the tribe that he had avenged his father's death from and, and destroyed that tribe, one of them ends up, for some reason, he's in Caesar's, uh, Caesar's royal court. And he realizes, he comes to learn that Imra al-Qais has just been, and Caesar seems to be fond of him. So he does a bit of the stirring, stirring, you know, stirring. He says to Caesar that, oh, Caesar, that, you know, you know that typical uh, huzur? <laughs> Chota mu bari baat. <laughs> You know that saying that it's a small mouth, but <laughs> he says it's a it's a big ask. If I may, please, 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 please. So Caesar says, "Yes, speak, speak, 
speak as you you know freely he says look uh caesar your highness he says the word is that he's had a little fling with your you know your women folk and you what you don't know about him is all his poetry is full of womanizing so for example in the famous muallaqa of imra al qais he says this is in his muallaqa by the way this is taught in all the <laughs> madrasas as well and everything where he says about he says wa mithluki hubla qad taraktu wa murdi'in fa alhaytuha fa alhaytuha an the fa alhaytuha an the tama'i he says, and how many a pregnant women or a nursing women that are nursing their child have I had sex with? <laughs> this is in, in his mu'allaqa, he says this. And I distracted her from her child. He says, فَمَنْ صَرَفَتْ لَهُ He says, فَمَنْ صَرَفَتْ oh, But I've, I've forgotten the next line. But he says, uh, but he mentions that she tries to... Um, she she gets distracted halfway because the child is crying. Bishikin wa shikuha tahti lam yuhawali. And he says, and, and yet half of her is still underneath me. And these are the kind of poems that he had, by the way. He was, <laughs> you know, this is the 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 greatest Arab poet of Jahiliya times. So this person tells Caesar, you don't know who this guy is. I mean, this guy, he's going to make a poem about your daughter and all of the Arabs are going to be singing it. So Caesar says, Acha, oh, 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 cat, humper attack. So he says, you know what? Mm, we'll have to fix him. So he says, okay, we'll fix this. So what he does is... Uh, he sends, you know, in that day and age, they used to have something known as al-hullat al-masmuma. So they would have a suit, which would be a bit like a, a kind of qamis kind of thing, a bit like a kind of qamis, but underneath you'd have like a sarong, an izar, like a toti. But they would have the inside of it um, poisoned. That when you wore it, especially in the heat, it would kind of go, it would kind of infiltrate penetrate into the pores and it would poison you so it was known as in um, classical times it was known as al-hullat al-masmuma it was often a trick that was used by people to poison someone send them a new suit so justinian sends imra al-qais a suit and he says and sends a message that this is my suit and it is made from this cloth and it is identified as that from caesar himself I want you to wear this on every place you go in front of people so they know that Caesar is with you. So Imra al Qais says, of course, you know, labbaik wa sa'adaik. So he wears this kind of hullat al-masmuma. And obviously you can imagine the Arabian heat, the desert, and he's wearing it in all these places. And the poison, it penetrates his pores and he starts to get poisoned. And he starts to get these things where... Um, parts of your skin start to kind of almost they turn into these kind of boils and drop off or something. This is why Imra al Qais is also called the Quruh. They call him the one of wounds, the one of many wounds, because he his body developed all these wounds as he was kind of traveling um, from town to town, and it's it's amazing because he 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 eventually he, he starts to break down with all this kind of, uh, this 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 poison in his body. And he says one of his famous poems known as the Senior. Um, and it is quite, honestly, it's quite a tragedy in its way because he, he begins it by saying, And he says, you know, the usual style that, hey, come, you know, my two companions settle in this place, Asas. And, you know, what's wrong? Why are people not listening to me? And in it, he brings up his kind of, because he, re he becomes so weak. And he kind of recants his days of glory. And he says, Wa ya rubba 
كررت وراءه وطاعنت عنه الخيل فتنفس because he was a warrior in his day and he says that you know there were so many people who were in distress in the desert that i found them and i chased the bandits away from them and allowed this person to breathe and then he kind of recounts his his events with women how women would all fight over him and and he says fa inni ra'aytu he says fa he says inni ra'aytu hunna la yuhibna man qalla maluhu <laughs> he says i see that women don't like a person who who starts to lack in wealth wala man ra'ayna shayba fihi wa qawwasa he says neither a person who once they start seeing white hair in him or who becomes arched forward because he's of old age and he's trying to say that you know there was a time where i had all of this and where are these people today and you know because he's struggling and he says something you know it's and it's really um he says um he says he says um fama khiltu tabrih al ayyam kama ara yadiq dhira'i an aquma fa albasa he says that i never thought that the days would end up with such tribulation that i can't even stand up to wear my own shirt like because this is how weak he's become and he says walaw anna an-nafsa tamutu jami'atan and you can see jami'atan is used as in the feminine here walaw anna an-nafsa tamutu jami'atan walakinnaha nafsun tasaqatu anfasa allah says if only my soul would just go in one go but it seems to be dying a breath at a time and he and then he says allah he says that ala inna lil mar'i ba'd al udmi qinwatan wa ba'd al mashi bi tula umr wa malbasa you know this line of his it's one that's full of hope like he says ala inna lil mar'i ba'd al udmi qinwatan he says indeed a person after having lost everything still there is a chance to regain everything wa ba'd al mashibi and even after turning white in the hair tula umrin a long life is yet to come wa malbasa and many garments to wear this line of his is so full of hope but unfortunately his life was coming to an end i mean unbeknownst to him and he he kind of stumbles and then he eventually reaches this place known as and he's only got one two companions with him and he, he reaches this place called asib and there's nothing in it and and he finds this what looks like a grave and it's almost like poetic uh, irony and he asks this old lady going by that well, what is this and she says it's the grave of a roman girl that's buried far away she she was from rome and she's buried here and and there here he says his poem the famous that many that's become proverbial where he says uh, ajaratana inna gharibani ha huna that he, he addresses her and and, he, and and no sorry he says he begins it by ajaratana inna al khutuba tanubu that he addresses he says my neighbor he's calling her his neighbor and he says that see calamities come and he says wa inni muqimun ma aqama asibu and i am kind of laying to, like s- taking up settlement in this place called asib ajaratana inna ha huna inna gharibani ha huna that both of us are strangers here and he says what he says uh, the famous wa kullu gharibin lil gharibi nasib allah it says an every stranger to another stranger is a relative <laughs> allah fa in tasili ma bainana fa tilka qarabatun wa in tasrimina fal gharib gharib says you know if you do reach out to me with a with 
with some kind of kinship, then that's awesome. And if not, then a stranger is always a stranger. But it's an, and in this place he dies, Imra al Qais. And it's this kind of story of this legend of a person who, who, who goes through this eventful life of adventures and you know these kind of wars and women and alcohol and triumphs and and being in the circles of the elite to in the court of caesar to to eventually find himself in this deserted valley and as allah says you know see not a soul knows where its death has been written and there's so much, so many lessons to take from this uh, story. And Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu an, when he spoke of the of the great poets of Jahiliya, he said, Sabiquhum, Imra al Qais. He said, The one who kind of beat them all was Imra al Qais. So, ladies and gentlemen, I thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> but this line of his was so profound because of the hope it kind of imbibed. Although you know, He's not going to make it. He says, "Ala inna lil mar'i ba'd al udmi qinwatan, wa ba'd al mashibi tula umrin wa malbasa." That a man, even after having lost it all, can still regain it all. Allahu Akbar.